Welcome back to Python scripting for GIS applications. This is a class at the University of Fairbanks and it's spring semester 2013. In this video session, I'm going to teach you how to use the search cursor. And the search cursor allows you to establish access to records or rows in tables. And the tables could be either standalone tables or feature attribute tables associated with some feature class. And the search cursor allows you read only access. So you won't be able to change any field values, but you'll be able to access field values and you'll be able to access shape properties. Okay, and there's two types of search cursors. So the first type is a legacy search cursor that you don't want to use, and that's this search cursor. So this is an old-fashioned slow search cursor you do not want to use. The search cursor that you do want to use is in the data access module. So that's DA for data access, and then dot search cursor. So that's in my list here, and double click on search cursor. Okay, so a search cursor basically retrieves rows from a table, and we'll put that in some variable. So I'll call this fire rows equals the search cursor, and the first thing it needs is the name of the feature class or the standalone table that we're working with. So in this case, it'll be in feature class. And then the second thing it needs is a list of the fields that you want access to. So the less fields you have in this list, the faster your search cursor will be. And frequently, we only need a couple fields to do whatever we're trying to do. So in this case, I'll just retrieve two fields. So one will be burn year, the first item in the list, and then the second one will be hectares, the second item in the list. So that will create our search cursor. Okay, so now we have our search cursor so we can access rows in our table. So we'll make another variable, we'll call this fire row, is equal to our search cursor object dot next. So get the next row where we're starting at the top of the table. So that basically retrieves the first row of our table. Okay, so what is that fire row? So if we use the Python type function, it's a tuple, which is like a list, except you cannot change the values inside that list. Okay, so when we created our search cursor, we said we're going to use these two fields, burn year and hectares, so we can retrieve them as items in our list. So for example, we could say burn year is equal to our row, and then that would be index zero, the first item in our list, and then a variable for burn hectares. So that's also going to be equal to our row object, and then this time it'll be the next item in the list, which will be item number one. So then we could say print burn year, comma, burn hectares. So for the first record in our table, the year was 1977, and it was 7,392.6 hectares. So we could check that out by looking at our polygon attribute table. And indeed, the first record in that table has a attribute burn year with a value of 1977, and an attribute hectares, 7,392 hectares. So if we go back to our Python window, we want to retrieve the next record in our table. So if I just press the up arrow key, get the next record in the table. And then we'll extract from that row, from that tuple, the first item, which would be item zero. So now if we look at burn year, 
it's 2004. And if we look at our table, that is the second record in our table. Okay, so typically when you're working with cursors, the table is locked so you can't access it in other applications. So whenever you're done with your cursor, it's a good idea to delete your row. So that will basically delete the cursor pointer. So we'll delete this fire row object. And then we'll unlock our cursor object. So that would be fire rows dot, and then reset just unlocks it. And reset also takes your pointer and moves it up to the top of the table if you have to start, start at the top of the table at any time. Okay, you can also access shape properties using the cursor. So if I press the up arrow key, do a search cursor, and this time, instead of getting fields, we'll get a shape property. So this is very similar to what you did in the field calculator. Here we would just say, okay, give us shape at area. And that will return for each polygon its area in whatever the shape area units are. So then we could retrieve the first row. So if I press the up arrow key, actually I'll just copy and paste it from here. So retrieve the first row, and we could even print out the first row. So that's what's in the first row. So a value seven, three, nine something. And if we look at our table, so if we look at our table, the first row has that as the shape area property. Okay, if you want, you can retrieve more than one shape property. So for example, here in our list, let's retrieve shape area and we'll also retrieve shape perimeter. So shape at length. And we'll also retrieve the burn year field value. So that will basically create a cursor and it's going to retrieve three basically table properties from the shape field, get the area, from the shape field, get the property length, and from the burn year field, get that value for burn year. And then we'll get our first row. So then fire row element zero, which is the shape area, and element one is going to be the length of that uh, polygon or the perimeter, and then burn year would be element two or the third object in that tuple. So that was the burn year of 1977. Okay, it's also possible to retrieve the vertices that the polygon is composed of using a search cursor. It's a little complicated, but we'll do it anyways. So basically, we'll make our search cursor, and the field we'll get will be the object ID. So OID ampersand. So basically, the object ID is a special field that's not editable. And then we'll get the shape field. So shape ampersand. And then we'll get our first row. So that basically will give us our first polygon with its polygon shape. So what we want to do is first, what's the feature ID of this polygon? So we could say fire row, and the first element in our tuple will be the feature ID. So it's feature ID of one. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll go through a loop to extract the points that that polygon associated with the first row is composed of. So polygons can be multi-part polygons, and in this data set they're not, but we'll still loop through. So for um, poly part in our 
second item in our tuple. So fire row, and the second item is index one. So that is basically the shape field. So then for each polygon part, we'll process it. So for the feature vertices, I'll call those poly point in poly part print poly point dot x and poly point dot y. So what it will do is go to this shape, get part one, and in all these polygons it's just a single part polygon, and then basically from that ring extract the points or the vertices, the x value and the y value. So there are all the x values and y values associated with the first polygon in that first row that we got from our fire polygons. Okay, the other thing you can do with search cursors are basically definition queries. So here we'll do a search cursor, large fires, and we'll retrieve the burn year and the hectares. So it's the feature class or the table we're interested in, the fields that we're interested in, and then some query. So the query would be the fields in the query would be enclosed in double quotes if you're working with file geodatabases or with shapefiles. And this is a personal geodatabase, so the fields are enclosed in brackets for queries with personal geodatabases. So our query will be hectares greater than a thousand. Now let's make it greater than 10,000. So give us all the records where hectares is greater than 10,000 and return that to this object large fires. Okay, the problem was there were no large fires that were above 10,000 hectares. So what we'll do is we'll just down our size limit to 1,000 hectares. Okay, and then we'll create our first row object. So large fire is equal to large fires dot next. So we could print that tuple. So basically we've got this large fire from 1977 and it was 7,902.669 hectares, which is above 10,000 uh, hectares. So that's how you can basically use a definition query in your search cursor. And once again, if it's in a personal geodatabase, the field name is enclosed in brackets. And if it's in a shapefile or a file geodatabase, the field name is closed in double quotes. Okay, you can also use a search cursor to create a list of unique values. So for example, let's get a list of all the different years that occur in this large fires data set. So basically what we'll do is we'll say our search cursor is just our input feature class and the only field we're interested in is the burn year. And then for every row in that search cursor, put that burn year in this list. So now if we say, what's the type of this list years? It's a list, and then how many items are in that list? So there's 2,836 years in this list. So then what are the unique values in that list? So to determine the unique values in that list, we can use the Python function set. So we'll just call this unique years is equal to set. And then look inside this list of 2,836 years and find all the unique year values. So then if we look at this list called unique years, it has all the unique years in this set. So 1940 
through 2012. And if we wanted to, we could run this through a loop. So for every year in this set, print the year value. So then it basically prints all the unique values that are in that field. Okay, so your assignment for our next video session is to write an ArcPy script using the search cursor that prints out the minimum and maximum area for the polygons within a polygon feature class. And I'll go over that solution in our next video session.